a warning. This just popped in my head, and I believe it came from the Lord. Some of you people have children, whether you're their guardians, you're their parents, their older brothers or sisters, whatever. You're taking care of a child. If that child starts talking about having a little invisible friend, yeah, not a good thing. Don't entertain, don't patronize that child. Warn them. You got a little friend. I don't care if they think the friend is, is a nice little sweetheart to play with. It will turn in time. Satan will use whatever to lure a child in. You win more bees with honey than with vinegar. So you so Satan knows this, and he will use the kind of friend that child longs for in order to draw them in and open that door and open windows to demonic activity. And then if your child starts having seizures or your child starts having fits of anger or temper tantrums that they never had before, and you're wondering, why is this child acting so bizarre? Because you may have allowed them to entertain the dark side. Now, I'm not trying to be spooky. This stuff is real. And see, this is what we don't hear a lot about in churches because a lot of saints do not believe that this stuff still happens today. But there are countless people out there who have fought, battled, dealt with, and seen demons. And if one can describe a demon and a person 3,000 miles away can say, hey, that same demon was in my dream with the exact same description you had. And they did the exact same thing. Guess what? That stuff is real. Especially when those two people never even met each other before. That happened to me. A guest speaker came and shared about a demonic encounter. And the way the demon looked and what the demon did was exactly identical to what I had in my dream. Yeah, how do you explain that away? That's not a coincidence. That's demonic activity. You be very careful. Don't entertain. You hear that child talking about, I got a friend, and uh, a girl or boy, whatever. And they're always talking to them and say, oh, I was in the room playing with my friend, and their friend's not a doll or a toy. You go in that room. You explain to that child about what may be happening. Now, if they're too young to understand, then what you do is while that child is out somewhere, you go in that room and you plead the blood of Jesus on everything in that room and all your house. You command all demonic entities to leave your house, never to return. You always stipulate that. In the name of Jesus, locks the door. That seals it. And you make sure that you cover for your child. Your child may not be saved, but you are. And because you are the authority in that house, those demons have to do what you say. And you forbid them to ever make contact with your child ever again. You forbid them. You forbid them from ever trying to communicate with your child in any way. Forbid them and command them never to return. You hear me? You have to take authority, whether you have believe it or whether you don't. Saying those words will not hurt anybody. Say them. Demons have to obey because of the authority Jesus placed in you. Now, you may not believe in water and water being wet, but water is wet anyway. You may not believe in the sunlight, but the sunlight is there whether you believe it or not. You may be blind and you can't see the light, so you don't believe it because you can't see it. It doesn't make it not real. Just, just in case it is real, you say those words. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. You leave my child alone. Never talk to him again. Never come and visit. I command you to stay away from my house. 
Never come near my property in the name of Jesus. Don't ever go near my child in the name of Jesus. Cover your child. God bless you.